Hello everyone, welcome to Layer Lab. My name is Martin and today we're going to be going over some of the highlights in the latest version of Creality Print, which is Creality Print 5.1. So a new feature that they brought out is a lovely thing called AI infill. And basically what this is supposed to do is add an extra infill where it needs it and remove unnecessary infill where it doesn't need it. So it's meant to speed up the print time and reduce the amount of filament that you're printing with. So I'm gonna show you uh, the normal infill that I normally use for this model. Now this is a big skull. It takes about 24 hours to print and the aim is to use the least amount of infill as possible so I don't go wasting filament inside the model when I don't need to. So this is typically what I will be printing with. It'll be 7% honeycomb infill and that is just going to print 7% everywhere. Now the areas that I am concerned about are where the eyes or the eye sockets of the skull are printed. Now, because I've printed this model many times, I know that there's enough infill to be able to print these overhangs perfectly. But if you are printing a big model for the first time and you don't wanna really risk it for the biscuit and find that halfway through the print, one of these overhangs has failed and ruined everything. So here is where AI infill comes in. Instead of using the same pattern for the entire model, you can just hit this lovely little button here. Now I found that lower infill densities don't actually do anything to the AI system. So I'll show you what I mean. So with 7%, you can see that there isn't really any change at all because it's too low for it to do anything. So I find that about 20% and above, you'll notice that it starts to kick in and add in additional support to areas that need it. So let's put on 20 and now you can see that it is starting to work, especially around the areas that need additional support. In the middle, you can see that it stays at around ooh, seven to 10%, but up here it gets much more dense. Now here is a fun fact for you. Even with a higher percentage infill, at 20% instead of seven, I understand I'm using a different pattern, but the print time has gone down to 20 hours instead of the 23 hours that I typically get from using the honeycomb infill pattern. And by using the AI infill, it means that all of these areas that need extra support can get them. And if anything, it decreases my print time, increases the print quality, and reduces the amount of filament that I use. So I think this feature is really cool. Uh, the next time I need to print one of these things, I will be using the AI infill feature, and I will make a separate video on it just to show you how I go. Now, continuing the train along infill, if you don't wanna leave it up to artificial intelligence, then don't worry because you can do it yourself. So if you wanna do it manually and you wanna select a certain part of your model to have a little less or a little more in full, all you have to do is add a modifier. In this case, we're gonna add a cylinder. You're gonna select the cylinder and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and then we're gonna move it inside the skull. Now, the one thing I would like to be able to see for a future update is <laughs> to be able to see the shapes. So maybe make a uh, type of onion skin or an opacity fader so you can see the outline of these shapes inside other shapes. So now we have our modifier in here and with this specific cylinder, we can click object and then we can go to the infill and we can make the infill, let's say 3% on this cylinder. And then we're gonna hit slice and then when we have a look at the slice you will see that cylinder has made the three percent infill for the center so if you want a very specific amount of infill for a specific part of a model then you can do it how cool is that this modifier isn't just for infill but it can do pretty much anything else that you want like you can change the speed you can change uh, so many different settings if you want so let's say we want to slow it down a bit so let's make all this 40 millimeters per second instead of 80 and then hit slice and then you can see right here where it says speed it goes from 80 and then as soon as it hits that modifier it goes down to 40. So this can be super helpful and it's super versatile with the amount of things that you can use it for. 
Okay, so one of the other features that they're sporting is that you have decreased slicing time once you have initially sliced a model. So let's start fresh. I'm gonna import this Scalaroni and let's hit slice. Now keep in mind that this is quite a large model, but because we're doing a bit of a time comparison between the two slices, I thought this could be good. Okay, so I think that was about eight seconds. So slice it again and see if we get any improvement. So hopefully this should slice a little bit quicker than last time. And there you go. That was five seconds. So from eight seconds to five, which is pretty cool. And that's pretty much in line with the amount of speed improvement that they say on the patch notes. So here's one thing that is a quality of life improvement and that is that they re-added the print calibration button back to this screen <laughs> for some reason they removed it and you had to go through an extra step to activate it but this print calibration button is back happy days okay so let's talk about support blockers and enforcers now previously the way of adding in additional support was to either just let the program do it or you could paint it so you could paint it on with a squiggly brush like this and then you'd see the supports kick into action or you could use the lovely fill tool which is quite helpful so they've added in a newer way which is similar to the way that you would do it with Cura actually and that is by right clicking add in support blocker or add in enforcer so a blocker obviously blocks supports and enforces adds and then you have these various shapes to use you add in the support blocker to where you want it and then it will move all the supports around that area so now we're coming to the scarf joint seam. You might have heard of it as a way to try and conceal the seam on uh, certain models, especially ones that are round. So here we can see two different types of seam. This is the regular seam. And then if we rotate it around, this is the scarf joint seam. So the regular seam is much more pronounced and obvious to sight, but it is very straight and um, when it comes to putting these on sharp edges they're basically invisible but where scarf seams really come into play is when it's on round objects where you can't really hide the seam I'm just going to rotate this to see if you can see the big difference the biggest difference i find is that the regular seam seam actually protrudes and with the scarf seam it kind of is hidden inside the model. Now I'm pretty sure I could make like an entire different video on scarf seams. There are some out there already that are pretty good in terms of what settings you need to use to maximize the visual output of the scarf joint seam. But alas, the feature is in here and uh, if you want to use it, then feel free. I think it could be pretty useful. Now a cool new feature that they have recently added in is the auto repair function for any damaged STLs that you bring into the program. I'm going to show you its capabilities uh, in terms of a basic cube versus something a little bit more complicated. So we're just going to go and delete the face off this cube and then we're going to import it and see what it does. And as you can see, it has already picked up that there's a missing face. So we're just going to hit repair and there you go the face has been added on. Now, this feature is really good, especially for people that are working in Blender because it has a tendency of adding in extra vertices and faces where you don't want them to be. So this actually saves a lot of time. Instead of having to send this to STL Fixer and going through the whole process of waiting in the queue for it to be fixed, blah, 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 you literally just press one button and it fixes it. <laughs> so, this feature is pretty badass. So now we know it can do really simple geometry. Let's try something a little bit more complicated. All right, now I have gone ahead and hacked up this head a little bit and uh, made it a little bit more difficult for the program to figure out what needs to be fixed because there are faces and edges that are now completely missing. So I'm very interested to see if this will fix it because <laughs> I've taken out parts everywhere. So here we go. If this does, I'm going to be super impressed. Wow, wow. Look at that, look at that. That is very cool. 
Great job, Creality. As Borat would say, very nice. So here are some of the areas that I think still need improvement and some errors that I'm still facing after these updates. So for some reason, the speed tab is still missing. I know if you press the advanced options, it comes up, but for some reason, all the other tabs are great, but speed is just blank. Now I'm still getting issues with settings not updating. So uh, right now it's working fine, but there'll be times where I wanna update one object with one thing and another object with another, and it all just has the same settings. So I think that's something that Creality needs to work on because it is quite frustrating when you think a model has printed out with a certain setting when it hasn't. And here is another feature that I think that could use some improvement, and that is the seam painting feature. Painting your own seam is all well and good, but it's not much use if you can't do it in a straight line. And I don't know about you, but if I saw a seam like this on a model, I would be quite sad. And at the moment, I don't think there is a way to really do it other than by using this section tool, increasing your pen size, and then painting along that part. This is really the only way that I've found to make a straight seam, and it seems kind of annoying. I think a better way to do this would be to enable seam painting with shapes. So you could just stick a cube right down the middle and on one edge of that will be where the seam will be and it will be completely straight up and down. That could be good because this manual painting with the mouse is just not very good. And the final thing I would like for them to change or update or fix is to be able to control the PID tuning in some way, shape or form for certain machines because the machines I have, the Ender 3 V3KE, do not give you the ability to uh, calibrate the PID. And when you do it through uh, mainsail, it doesn't actually do anything. It runs the whole program of PID tuning, but doesn't actually fix the problem of it overshooting and undershooting. So Creality, if you're listening and you can implement some of these things, that would be fantabulous. Hope this has helped all my lovely viewers out there. If it has, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.